right, what's up, everybody? So today I have one of the best of the best and a rare one at that. This is a silver-plated Selmer Supreme Alto. So I'm going to give this thing a whirl, and we're going to see what this is about. But I can't really do a whole lot about this light that's up here. And also, I'm in a different room, so acoustically it may sound a bit different from the other videos that I've done uh, demoing these saxophones. Also, it is quite cold in here, so I like to set this stuff to music. So this may be flat if you're like checking stuff with a tuner or whatever. But okay, let's get to it. This instrument is super responsive. I'm very used to Selmer's resistance, and I think that one of the things that Selmer was really trying to accomplish with the Supreme is not so much trying to find a hybrid between a jazz and a classical saxophone, but really trying to be less dependent on the Selmer resistance in order to define the Selmer sound. The most intriguing design aspect of these new Supremes that I found is this like bulbous -y shape right here. But this little bulbous part right here, I was curious to see how that would affect the response. Now, obviously I'm speculating here, I don't know, but I think that this is one of the most important attributes in the design of the saxophone. <laughs> Okay, wow, man. <laughs> we have metal resonators here. It's going to be difficult for me to show you. Look how bright this thing is in that light. The engraving is really nice. It doesn't quite pop because it's all silver. But, man, it's, like, really, really responsive. And it carries with it that Selmery thing. It really is a different kind of Selmer altogether. Uh, let me see what else we got. <laughs> saying that there are some intonation issues that I'm having, but I would not blame it on this instrument. Like I said, it's cold here and I don't have this setup dialed in quite for how this horn is behaving. I'm pushing it in areas where it doesn't need to be pushed and I'm adjusting it in areas where it doesn't need to be adjusted. I think that this is a really good saxophone. I think that if you are looking to get a professional saxophone, this is definitely something that you should put on your list of horns to try. If you are a fan of Selmer, especially if you're coming from the Series 2 or even a Mark VI, which they have here, I'm going to try that one. I think it's a 1950s something or another, and I'm going to compare the two and see 
how they play. Okay, I think that when I listen back to this, I'm going to be even more impressed than what I am right now. Okay, man. Wow. Very, very impressive. I do have my saxophone sound development book that is now available. I have my All Things Diminished book here. And on the bottom here, I even added some altissimo fingerings for the diminished scales. I have my altissimo book for alto saxophone. And of course, I have my altissimo book for tenor saxophone. These are all available on PayHip. Uh, as a digital purchase only. If you like this kind of content, ladies and gentlemen, and you want to help support the channel, you can buy me a piece of cake. It's like a Kickstarter, Patreon type of thing. Any, any little bit really does help a lot. Okay, so I got myself on a Mark VI Alto here. This does not have a high F sharp key. This is, I think, from the 1950s. Even with these glasses on, the serial number is a little too small for me to see, but... It looks like a 76,000, but let's see what we got. Okay, there is, it sounds like there's less harmonics in the sound of this instrument. It's more of a pure type of sound. As for which one I like the most in terms of the sound, I think I got to go with the Supreme on that one. Um, I like the added color that's there. This, the mechanism on this saxophone definitely feels dated. I mean... You know, that's just kind of one of the things that you get when you're deciding on what kind of Mark VI or what kind of vintage horn you want to get. But believe me, this is delightful to play. It's really cold in here. <laughs> Take that into consideration. There's like a clarinet guy and some people talking outside, but just tune that out for me. All right, let's see. Overall, this instrument seems like it's here, and the Supreme feels like it's here. That high B flat on the Supreme, that tended to ring a lot more, considerably more. <laughs> 
Also, just I like the layout of the Supreme. It's it's very, very logical. This seems to be offset in a way that people who prefer March 6s would generally prefer. Uh, all right. I'm thinking what else I usually play on these videos. <laughs> Okay, man. Wow. Very impressive saxophone. All right. Uh, I got a berry that I want to try. So let's do it. And now we have the Yanagisawa BW01. This is a low A berry sax. I generally prefer a low B flat berry sax. And when I put my hands in position to play this, I am immediately reminded about why I prefer low B flats than low A's. This instrument feels a bit lighter than other low A berry saxes that I've played. This low A key has a lot of space on it. So if your thumb is just slightly out of position, then you're going to wind up hitting this key. <laughs> Typical of Yanagisawa saxophones, really, really nice response. <laughs> <laughs> it is a really nice, very easy to play berry saxophone. <laughs> This high A key is just all in the way. That's weird. I don't like it. I'm having to really fight. Let me. <laughs> plays really well and I think the sound is absolutely fantastic but this low A key is just all kinds of in the way all right uh, let's recap the Yanagisawa BW01 baritone saxophone is absolutely spectacular that thing just sounds incredible and it is absolutely by far the best low A berry sax that I've played they've made some advancements with their low A mechanism, it was super easy to push. And also there's like a helper mechanism that helps to assist in actually closing that key. 
I don't usually play baritone and I usually prefer a low B flat. So it's just going to take some time for me to get used to. But like I do for all these videos, I just head up, do a demo instead of a review for these kind of videos and just kind of see what happens. So obviously it will take some time to get used to this mechanism. If I'm going to buy a low A Barry sax, hands down, I'm getting the BW01. I really preferred the complexity of the sound of the Selma Supreme over the Mark VI. The Mark VI sounded a little bit empty, but it did have a really nice pure sound. If you don't want that type of color to the sound, then obviously, you know, Mark VI's are legendary. But if I were to get a Selma Supreme, I would either go with the dark lacquer one or I would go with the black lacquer. The only legitimate criticism that I have about the Supreme, the silver plated, was that the silver plating makes the engraving kind of washed out and you're paying for that engraving. So if I were to get one, I think I would definitely gravitate toward the black lacquer because the engraving with that gold, with that black lacquer just looks absolutely spectacular. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that's all I got for you. Stay tuned. See ya.